Hey, what's up guys? Aaron here and welcome back to my F1 2019 mod career mode here today for round number four at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix at Baku, driving as Charles Leclerc in his Ferrari car alongside Sebastian Vettel for the 2019 season. If you guys did miss the previous one, the third episode at the Chinese Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one here. But we head into Azerbaijan now. The title fight seems pretty tight actually, you know, with the 2019 mod, the Mercedes and Ferrari are very, very equally matched, as well as the Red Bulls, unlike kind of real life, which makes things a bit more interesting for this career mode, uh, really. And for round four, Azerbaijan, we already know Azerbaijan in the game is pretty crazy. The slipstream is going to be so OP down that main straight that I can't really, you know, call it. And after last episode, we, we had a bit of a lackluster one. I think it's safe to say the end of the Grand Prix. I just really couldn't find any pace versus Sebastian Vettel. It was the first time in a long while that I've been thoroughly beaten by my AI teammate in a career mode race. And so kind of hoping to come here with a bit of a better setup, perhaps. I think that's maybe a big part of it was the setup was a little bit wrong at China and hoping to kind of make amends basically and do a lot better uh, when it comes to qualifying and the race day. So speaking of qualifying, we're going to get into that then. The one-shot qualifying, of course, if you're unfamiliar with the 2019 mod, uh, you have to do one-shot qualifying to really make the mod work properly in uh, in qualifying, uh, as, as it were, uh, for all the AI to go out at the same time as you. So at the moment, we're down in P4, but we're about to gain a heap of time here through the left and the right. Very tidy line. I was so happy with that line I took there through that left and right. It was so clean and tidy. First time in a long while where I felt I've actually nailed Baku in a way, almost. Like, as most of the time I hit most of the curbs, and I feel very awkward and uncomfortable, but I really felt a one with the car around this lap, and so as we come to the line now, down that long motorway straight, we're crossing the line, and it is going to be pole position as Charles Leclerc here for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So, so happy with that. So with that then, here's the full starting grid then for the 2019 Azerbaijan Grand Prix for this career mode. Then on pole position is myself as Leclerc alongside Valtteri Bottas, who's clearly had his porridge this morning in second place. Hamilton then in third with Vettel P4. Raikkonen, it's a very surprising P5 now for America. Had both Red Bulls then have Sergio Perez in P8. Grosjean then in P9 with Nico Hogmo P10. Sainz and then Lance Stroll, the next row outside the top 10. Mangs and Giovinazzi share a row with Gafiat and Ricardo sharing one behind them. Then you've got Lando Norris in P17, Alexander Albon in P18, and then the last row reserved for the Williams drivers, Robert Kubica and George Russell. Let's get into the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So for the last two episodes, our car has had the pace to be on pole position, uh, but instead it's been Sebastian Vettel that has got that pole. And so this time, finally, it is my turn with Leclerc to get this one. But it was very close between both uh, us Ferraris and the Mercs, Bottas and Hamilton, if you look at the timings there. So this might be a very, very closely contested Grand Prix. Strategy-wise, we're a two-stop here onto two sets of super softs, and that will be the best way to go about it. it. The only question mark will really be the traffic, but uh, he's hoping with the slipstream down the main straight, that won't be too much of an issue for us. But here we go, then, getting into this end as we go to five red lights for round number four of the 2019 season the Azerbaijan Grand Prix at Baku five red lights are out and we're underway off from pole we cut across on the left trying to defend our position very early on from Valtteri Bottas there and instead it's actually the two Mercs that have a bit of a tangle and they're side by side into turn one Hamilton I think is trying to get the better down the inside there Bottas on the outside no no actually no way around sorry my bad Hamilton actually trying to look around the outside he actually had it for a second but now Bottas is back into second but that actually may not be great for him and actually might be better for Hamilton to stick behind because now he's got that toe already down this mini straight in sector one and he's now finding himself having another look around the outside these two having a ding dong battle at the start and that's helping me out because right now I can just chill out in first place as I uh, watch behind me uh, these two Mercs battle and Hamilton is uh, just about ahead but they're still side by side now they're getting through halfway through the lap now and they're still at it absolutely amazing racing to kick off on lap number one here between the silver arrows but who's going to come out on top it looks like Hamilton just about brilliant little squeeze out there through the right hander just before the castle section where it has to be single file so Hamilton second place Bottas in third and now unfortunately for me Hamilton's going to come knocking, knocking here we don't have too much ERS to play around with we're still in overtake mode but he comes even quicker there down the main straight with the slipstream no DRS yet remember that's just pure slipstream power there showing you how overpowered it is and he sets a purple lap time they're going to try and out break him and break as late as we dare we have a bitter contact on the exit there with the front right side he's still there though so that's all fair game there I think and we go to the inside now on the curbing a little bit that's going to hop the car up a little bit into the air and unsettles us and so we're down to second but now but now back in the toe of the Brit with DRS Auto open nipping the car to the left hand side there Hamilton will have to be on the right and into the next corner I've got to admit though in hindsight went very early on the brakes there into that corner I was just too scared of locking up too many times around here because I know how easy it is 
around uh, Baku there. Uh, but in the end, actually, it doesn't matter because we're still there. And Hamilton now is the one that goes awkwardly over the curbing. So he managed to find some place down the inside. But we lock up. We go wide. Hamilton's back down or inside there. He's switched backed it, basically. And so this is an epic fight there. In the first three laps between the two Mercs. And now myself and one of the Mercs here. And this time, it's Valtteri Bottas. Actually, my bad. So Hamilton got completely squeezed out then by me going wide. And Bottas was the wily old fox that sent one around my outside there on that mini chicane in the middle of sector two. So absolutely amazing racing from both Mercs there. And Bottas is back up into P2. So if this is anything to go by in the first three laps, I think we're going to have an absolute jam-packed 26 laps here coming up. And Bottas may just go for a move here to the inside. It's bold, it's brave, and he's made the dive. But we're going to break early, switch back to the left-hand side, and we're going to absolutely embarrass him there on the exit. Uh, so Bottas, he may have had the guts there, but like the racing smarts, just be a bit patient on the exit there and get the place back. And now, as we move on later in the Grand Prix, we're going to come in for an early first pit stop there. I fancy getting out of this fight and trying to just drive by myself and uh, hopefully in that way I can get away a little bit from the two Mercs and my teammate as well Vettel uh, I haven't mentioned him so far but he was still very much there right behind the two Mercs there. he was actually going for a move for P3 uh, but now it would have been technically P2 uh, so uh, we'll see where Vettel ends up and if he makes an early pit stop maybe and copies me but right now we're out in P20 eventually lap 7 uh, towards lap 8 as we're going to go across the line eventually uh, we're up into P11 now Vettel has made his pit stop he's behind me in uh, P12 so he has made an early pit stop looks like the Mercs have been caught up a little bit in traffic and tyre wear because they're way down the order now so I think it will be a net P2 eventually for us two Ferrari cars so we now nip past George Russell very easily with DRS uh, Vettel's following me though and look at the speed Vettel's getting as he sets the fast after the Grand Prix so Vettel is on it like a car bonnet and so I'm starting to get a little bit afraid now that kind of pace and lurking of Vettel kind of nature is almost like what happened at China last episode where he just came through and just ploughed through in terms of pace so uh, for now we have trap position but I'm a little bit wary of how quickly Vettel was sticking with us there but now we're gonna have to try and overtake the other Williams car Robert Kubica where is he gonna go he's gonna stick awkwardly to the uh, middle of the circuit so we have to go to the inside and uh, force the issue there and get up into uh, what be P9 and now we try and chase after Lando Norris trying to avoid all these curves just trying to use the raw grip the Ferrari should have as long as we keep it on the black stuff and off the red and white and so trying to kind of uh, basically recopy what I was doing in qualifying keeping it, keeping it nice and clean basically and you can see that it's paying dividends because look at the attraction I've got on Norris there to the inside what Hamilton did on Bottas on lap number one squeeze him out just before the castle section he has to give up the place because there's no way we can make a 2x2 two two into the castle section so one of you has to give it up and more so it's always going to be the guy on the outside because you kind of squeeze him off there and so uh, uh, Bob's your uncle we're up into a P8 then and we're now going to chase after the two Toro Rosso cars of Dan Kvyat and Alexander Albon those two might have a bit of a scrap though because Kvyat will get DRS off Albon so we're going to have to try and uh, get out of this fight and try and just maybe catch them both napping as the two focus on each other we might just nip past them on the left here as we open DRS Kvyat will try and overtake Albon but he'll get boxed in by me basically on the left there so we just cut across there very aggressively onto the racing line and get back uh, get past both of them up into P6 so right now it's been a pretty damn good overtaking show actually we're making our way through the traffic pretty well actually it's not really hindering us too much now it might though because there's a big train here of four cars and the tail end is Dan Ricardo. can we get past him on the outside we'll go for a big old lunge this is such an unorthodox place to make a move but we've done it to the inside for the next right and we've absolutely schooled Ricardo. so the Ferrari is working wonders right now and I'm really hooked up into the circuit in sector two especially now and now we get on to this second McLaren of the afternoon Carlos Sainz is trying to get Lance Stroll we're going to go to the inside and he just about leaves us enough room we get a bit of slipstream off the Canadian and then we open DRS with flying pass and we're up into P3 now we're chasing after Antonio Giovinazzi in the Alfa Romeo in second place and then I think it's a uh, Haas of Magnussen in first so Giovinazzi doing a really good job being this high up here uh, so far in this uh, career mode uh, the Alfa Romeo's haven't been doing too well there so let's see how that ends and Magnussen also way up there but there's yellow flags behind and it's with this incident with uh, the McLaren the racing boy car very uh, kind of a comical crash that is a half spin there and he gets spun I think that's Perez gets spun into the pit lane exit so that was uh, very awkward indeed but now as we move through then this second stint we've got Vettel fighting Valtteri Bottas this is and Vettel on the outside Bottas on the inside who will come out on top and this is to make it effectively a net one-two for Ferrari because 
because the other cars ahead of me are going to pit eventually. So this is basically the top front fight. So I'm in P1 uh, basically once everything shuffles out. And this is a fight for P2 basically. And so Vettel is trying his best to make it a 1-2 for Ferrari. But Bottas has put up a mighty fight. I don't know where on earth Hamilton is. He must have got really held up in the pit lane or traffic or tire wear or a mixture of all three. Because he doesn't appear, appear to be anywhere near these guys. So I don't know what's going on. But speaking of these two guys, they're still side by side. So again, I think this is the third fight that's been side by side for the first half of the lap here. So Baku is really treating us right now in this 2019 career mod. And Vettel is the one that's going to get the better. And uh, Bottas probably gets a bit of deja vu there being squeezed out on that uh, same corner for like the second time now in this Grand Prix. But now as we move on to lap 15, back to our POV, our second stint has ended in a flash here. And we're coming in for our third and final stop. And they're coming in for our second and final stop of the afternoon onto another set of super soft tyres. So not too much to talk about after all the kind of traffic navigation. We just did our business. Uh, Vettel and Bottas were catching us a little bit as the tyre wear was kicking in. So that's why I'll also come in on lap 15. Uh, I could have maybe gone for one or two more laps if I wanted to stick to my uh, initial plan on the default strategy window. But I thought I'd come in earlier and try and get a bit of an undercut basically. But we might hit some traffic involving Antonio Giovinazzi here uh, who's looking pretty quick actually. Alfa Romeo is looking pretty damn good in a straight line here. He's, he kept ahead of the two Torosos, remember. But we're going to come at a rate of not and I really fancy not getting caught up behind this quick in a straight line Alfa Romeo. So we go for the biggest time bomb ever I think I've done in a long while on Carimo there. That took some guts. That took some glory. And we made it work. So hey ho, you know, more the merrier. So now we're up into P2 on the track and we've got to chase after Kevin Magnussen in P1 who's doing a good job to have track position there on a on a unique one-stop strategy. Meanwhile, behind getting past Giovinazzi is now Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel, I believe, who's close behind there, I think. Yeah, I think he's just in the background. Not quite yet, but he will soon be. But there, there, there is basically those two. And also Hamilton, actually. Yeah, uh, sorry, I forgot about Hamilton. I said he was uh, he was quite way down the order in the second stint, but he's come out of nowhere now, and he's now ahead of Vettel. So he's effectively in third place in the in the kind of top four running here. So I don't know how he's done that, because he was, he was basically not even in the picture beforehand. So uh, I don't know. Looks like all three of us have slowed massively, and Hamilton's caught up maybe Majorly to, to myself, Bottas, and Vettel. Uh, speaking about catching up to people, I'm going to catch up to Magnussen eventually now in P1. He's going to go defensive. Obviously, he has all right to defend his position. He's there legitimately for P1. But we go round the outside, which is going to be a very tasty move on the exit. But in hindsight, again, maybe not so clever because he's going to get the slipstream back on me there. I have to lift off as well to give him some room on the inside. But now he's going to come back at me with slipstream, with DRS probably. So he's going to get back past me, basically. It doesn't matter if he's in a Haas car. He's still going to have the straight line speed to get past me. He may not have the grip in the corner, but it doesn't matter when he waltzes past me like that. And uh, now also I'm being attacked by Valtteri Bottas, who's come out of nowhere. And he makes a big lunge to the inside there. So a lot of lunges into turn one. Loving it for us, but not so much when we get lunged by someone else. And now our DRS has failed in the bottom right. That is a disaster because that's not something you want around Baku here with, uh, you know, uh, clearly the amount of, uh, you know, speed you gain with DRS here. We've not got it anymore. So now we have to make overtakes with pure slipstream and our engine power. And oh no, Magnussen, what has he done? Magnussen's hold, held me up there. We're nearly into the wall. We take avoiding action and we're now down to P3. And so in a matter of about uh, just half a lap there, it's all gone wrong. And just uh, now I'm in a very uncomfortable position maybe. We've kept up with Valtteri Bottas. We can see in the bottom right there, I'm low on fuel. I've got some ERS to play around with though, so we can go overtake mode, have DRS and try and get a double slipstream off Magnuson. So we might actually be able to rectify this, but the fact that I don't have DRS is going to hinder me every time I get into first place. So here we go now, three wide with the Haas and Merck, and I'm so close to being completely rammed into the wall there by K-Mag, but we get up into first place there. Bottas, though, on the inside, still on the inside, and he's going to make the move. It's three wide now, because Hamilton is also there. I think, no, it's Magnus in my bad, but still, we have three wide into turn one, actually. I only just realised that Magnus was still attacking me, and he is still attacking me now into turn two, and he's got me. This is ridiculous. The Haas has got some absolute uh, crazy speed. And he's still in first place somehow. I, I, I bet you Magnussen didn't think he was going to be in this position. Fending off two Ferraris and, a Mer and two Mercs. And actually keeping it in first place for a fair few laps here. Uh, so I need to try and get past him desperately right now. So we move on to lap 21 now. We're going to go up into high ERS modes there. And we're going to find some slipstream here. Magnussen going slow. He's maybe on lower ERS modes. And we just just about squeezed through there on the left hand side. Magnussen once again showing he could equally so just put us in the wall if he wanted to. It's getting very fine indeed but we're on the inside for this next one. It will squeeze him out and now we'll push away and try and get away but that might not work as like I said 
with the Audi RS, it's going to be so difficult. Uh, but to be, said, to be fair, saying that though, it looks like Vettel actually might be more likely to overtake Magnussen. So Vettel, let's watch what he does first. He's going to pull through on the left-hand side. Very zoomed out camera shot. You can just about see what's happening. Vettel now into P2. It's a 1-2 for Ferrari now. Bottas down to P4. But here comes Vettel. He's got even more speed to now overtake me. He's going for the double pass on the main straight. We're going to take it nice and easy. Cut inside and take it very calm because it's my teammate. I don't want to battle him too much because also without DRS, I'm not much use really. So I may as well let him through right now and try and see what I can do later on in the lap because we now are going to build some Citroen. But again, you can see there, usually I would have DRS and I st I'd still don't have it uh, on that 22 here so we go for the move down the inside Vettel goes uh, on the outside to defend but that's gonna be no use on the better line and so we're back up into P1 for now for now I suspect this fight's gonna go on once more again as we now move on back to the main straight here on lap 24 onto lap 25 so now there's only a few laps to go in this race once we get across this line for the new lap there and now Hamilton is coming into the frame he's overtaking Vettel he's up into P2 both those guys are catching me rapidly and Hamilton with a big lunge on the outside we go defensive but a lot of oversteer and we just about hold the car in a straight line that could have been a nasty spin for me to be honest so I'm actually counting my lucky stars there it could have been a lot worse uh, than the Hamilton just simply overtaking me but now he's got DRS I still don't have any and Vettel I think has DRS off me so this is getting very claustrophobic in a way on the second last lap of the Grand Prix Hamilton will hold the inside line we go for the big dive lock up on the front left narrowly missed the wall on the right but we've got it Hamilton's been flustered he's not got enough traction there we're going to squeeze him off on the left and we're up into P1 once again. So we're fighting for our life right now to keep this first place. But it, uh, for how long? And, you know, what, what, what's the timing going to be like when we go to the last half of the Grand Prix? I'm going to have to think about this very tactically of where I let people pass and where I pass them. Because Hamilton is now down inside with the big dive. And Vettel has made the dive as well. And so we're side by side with our teammate momentarily. And so it's all kicking off. And now Hamilton's waltzed away a little bit. It, did I give him too much space potentially? And now he's kind of gone away. Has he broken the DRS, I wonder? Let's see as we go through onto the last lap of the Grand Prix this will be as we go down the main straight. Will I have DRS? Is it fixed yet? I'm not too sure. But Vettel's going to slip through me. Bottas is also going to be there as well. But we're gaining and we do have DRS, I can confirm. We do have DRS. It's been activated once again. So finally my team have fixed it and we're going to go for the huge dive down the inside and just like we did with Antonio Giovinazzi, we somehow slow the car down. But Hamilton got the switch back move to the inside. So now we're side by side momentarily before he squeezes out so we're back down to second once more but remember this is this this is the last half of the Grand Prix this is it we need to do this we get slipstream again DRS for the second time now basking to the inside easy on the brakes Hamilton gives us the room though lot of respect there from Hamilton and so we're on the outside and we're going to have another side by side scrap just like we did on lap number three it's like deja vu all over again except I'm on the other side of the circuit this time round we're going to be on the inside for the next chicane which is not the ideal place to be honest there but Hamilton's going to hold the line I'm going to dive it make some contact with him then switch it to the right and somehow make that. That was a bit argy-bargy, I will admit, but you've got to get the elbows out on a street circuit sometimes there to make it stick and to wrap into P1. But now this is where the tacticalness comes in. If I let Hamilton overtake me maybe just after this section, I will be then in a prime position to slip through him back to get the race win at the literally the death of it on the, on the line. Because if I don't let him overtake me here, he will just do that to me across the line and get me, and that will just be horrendous. So we're going to go slow on purpose. None ERS. He has a huge lockup, as do I, but he makes the move nonetheless. He's up into first, and now this is where I need to hope what I've just said is actually going to work. We've not got much fuel to use. We're a standing mixture, but we've got ERS, and, we've gonna and we're going to have DRS. Thankfully, it is fixed now for this last lap. Here we go now. We'll swing through the right and just need to focus on getting in that toe, keeping this right up, tucked behind his gearbox. And here we go now, climbing the gears, climbing the speed. DRS open there. ERS overtake mode and across the line on the last lap for first place and the win of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. That's a great win. There. You've really been great today. Great effort there from Ferrari to take the victory today. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here? Well, I think the track conditions just really suited their car today. Wind, track temperature, you name it. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature. So the more easily you can keep them there, the better your race tends to go. And that's exactly what happened. Their car just looks so comfortable out there. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race. 
but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. So in the end, we've won that absolutely thrilling Azerbaijan Grand Prix. What a race. The top four are separated by a second on the last lap. That is ridiculous. Look at the top ten. The top ten are separated by literally less than three and a half seconds. That is crazy. The amount of fighting we had at the end meant that everyone bunched up because there was that much traffic basically going on uh, amongst us fighting so much. And even the, behind us, outside the top four fights, it looks like Magnussen was in a fight with Gassi and Giovinazzi and Carlos Sainz and Kafia they're all really close as well so I'm guessing they were in their own separate slipstream battle so absolutely amazing but at the end of it we get the 25 points uh, it was actually Sebastian Vettel who managed to get the extra point for the fastest lap of the Grand Prix there so that's why he's got 16 points rather than 15 for third place there's he gets the fast lap award there and the extra point so in the Drivers Championship then we take back the lead of the championship 75 points by one point to Lewis Hamilton and only four points back is Sebastian Vettel so it's all very very close indeed between us two Ferraris and Hamilton with Bottas unfortunately lagging behind a little bit he's got quite unlucky in the last uh, few episodes in the, in the opening of the season there and uh, this race was really more kind of his kind of performance so let's see how he goes in the next few races there but Magnussen's still doing a mega mega job to be ahead of both Red Bulls in P4 and Verstappen unlike in real life it's roles reversed in the career mode here Verstappen is the one struggling to get to grips with the Red Bull in 2019 here compared to Gasly and Sainz doing a good job to get ahead of Ricardo finally in the McLaren team and the constructors then Ferrari as a team we still maintain the lead controlling this league very well. We've been very consistent compared to the Mercedes guys. So 145 to 102. Red Bull maintain their third place there. The only swappage I think really is McLaren and Renault there swapping positions. And Alfa Romeo finally get some good points on the board, but it's not enough to overtake anyone. Racing point with 11 points there, uh, 8 there. But what a stunning episode, guys, at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. If you guys did enjoy that racing, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, to subscribe for weekly, full on content. I've been Aaron for Hope you enjoy today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.